Superintendent Denise Juno. Over the past few weeks, people around the world and here in Seattle Public Schools community have responded and changed their daily lives to protect each other's health. Our response to the changes required are showing progress in slowing the spread of the virus. Additionally, the governor's action of closing school buildings for the remainder of the year provides us with clear direction and allows us to reestablish predictability and consistency with continuous learning for the rest of the current school year. All of this change has pushed many of us to the limits of our well being. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the anxiety and stress we're all experiencing, to celebrate the extraordinary efforts students, families, and staff are putting into this and to turn our attention to our own social and emotional well-being. As we head into the spring break, I encourage you to prioritize your own wellness. Give yourself permission to find time when possible to focus on self-care. We'll all need to tap into this mindset as we complete this school year remotely. Now is the time to take a collective deep breath. We're all in this together. I'm Kai Kunkel, Social Emotional Learning Coordinator. Closing schools changed our households overnight. Families had to figure out how to provide basic needs, financial resources, and now prolonged academic support to their children, all during a time of uncertainty. This has been a nearly impossible task, and the range of feelings that you are experiencing from stress to frustration to anger are shared by families everywhere. You've been inundated with messages from Seattle Public Schools, and as the bumps in the road do smooth out and we all settle into new routines, let's pause and remember our priorities. This message is for parents and guardians. Your social emotional wellness is important, especially now as your children watch and learn how the adults they look up to manage change. Practice your own self-awareness, naming and having self-compassion for your emotions. Noticing when your body and mind are alerting you that stress is taking over. Managing those emotions with routines like getting enough rest and exercise and taking a deep breath before responding to the needs of your children. These practices allow us all to solve problems from a calmer place. As all of us parents know, sometimes we do and say things we regret. These are moments for reflection and for repair with our children. More than ever, our goal is not perfection, but connection. To show empathy, to set realistic goals, including prioritizing wellness over academics when necessary, and to celebrate successes. These are among the small steps that we can take daily that will add up to a feeling of safety and support within our homes that will carry us through this challenging time. Yes, we are at a distance, but we are still in this together. Hi, this message is for students. My name is Brian Manzo and I'm a school counselor in Seattle Public Schools. These are very strange times we are living in. Learning from home for the remainder of the school year is not anything I would have imagined. I've never experienced anything like this in my life, so I ask you to consider, how are you feeling? For me, adjusting to this new normal is bringing up a wide variety of thoughts and feelings. What about you? So many of you are missing out on school activities, performances, sports, clubs, dances, and even graduation. Students and school staff miss being together to share in the learning process and to build relationships and community. Your teachers and other school staff miss you and are doing everything they can to connect with you and to help you to continue your learning even from home. All of the sacrifices you have been asked to make in order to keep our community healthy and safe may bring about big time feelings. You may even notice that your feelings change from day to day or even from hour to hour. It may be strange to realize that we are about to start spring break. You may be experiencing a wide range of feelings from relief for a break to disappointment about canceled plans to sadness about not getting to connect with friends or loved ones in person. All of those feelings are normal and okay. Recognizing your thoughts and feelings is the first step in being able to manage your emotions and is necessary in order to have healthy relationships with those around you. 
while we are away from one another next week, see if you can give yourself some moments of mindfulness to listen to your thoughts and feelings without judgment. If you feel comfortable, see if there are safe ways to connect with friends and trusted adults to talk about what you're feeling. Try to make time for listening to others as well. There will be many more opportunities to increase our social emotional learning skills. I know I'm not alone in saying that I look forward to connecting with all of you in whatever way we can when we return. For now, let's not forget we're all in this together. Hi, my name is Hayan El Sahardi, and I'm the social emotional learning consulting teacher for Seattle Public Schools. I have a message for all staff about taking care of your own social emotional needs and overall well-being during this very complex time. As a staff, our identity and sense of purpose may be drastically altered or perhaps even lost right now. We go into education to better the lives of children and not being able to be in our schools or offices to continue our work as we've always known it has shocked our minds, bodies, and hearts. Not being with our students and colleagues, both of whom we care so much about, it's hard, but there are practices that we can use to support ourselves during this time and always. Today, I'd like to share three simple tips to support your own social emotional needs. First, stay connected. This can help with feelings of isolation and provide emotional support. Our roles are wonderfully interactive and social. Find ways to consistently connect virtually, that aren't just limited to classroom instruction or work meetings. Take time to check in and share positive, if not humorous, messages. Simply put, it's great to have some fun to lift our spirits. Second, let's work on adjusting our expectations. With the continuous changes, let's work on shifting our perspectives as needed to keep our focus on what we can do. This can help manage stress and keep us grounded. In education, we often feel like we can do it all. But for now, just think about doing the next right thing. And lastly, act for your health and wellness. Exercise kindness, forgiveness, and compassion with yourself and others. Think about creating a realistic schedule that's focused on your overall well-being. This can involve positive strategies, such as eating and exercising in ways that support your body taking time for emotional reflection, and asking for help when you need it. The road ahead may be rocky at times, but remember, we've got this, especially when we're all in it together. Hello, my name is Jay Upshaw, and I work with Behavioral Health and Discipline. Right now, all of us, families, students, and staff are feeling the emotional impact from these hard days. We're building new ways to work, to learn, and to connect with each other. Right now is a time for compassion. Um, and we also should take the time to allow ourselves and the people around us to be honest about what we're feeling. It's okay. And do me one other favor. To the best of your ability, please prioritize your wellness. We're all in this together. If you need any kind of support or resources, particularly mental health, please go to our website at seattleschools.org. I hope you have a wonderful, rejuvenating spring break, and I look to see you when we get back. Be well. Bye.